thank you so much for joining us today at the Mina Games Conference here in Beirut. Um, I'll just jump into the questions. Sure. My pleasure. Great. Uh, so the first one is um, Ubisoft has been open for two years in the region in Abu Dhabi. Um, what lessons have you learned over the course of your time here? That's a difficult to answer. Um, it, is, it is not one region. You know, every country is different. They have all different politics and religion. They need different customization of the games. They have demand for the game, different payment systems. So a lot of different things. Um, so um, a lot of, let's say, Europeans and Americans are very not ignorant, but inexperienced about the area. So they have to learn everything from scratch. Um, how to enter the country correctly, um, who to talk to, you know, who are the distributors, the payment systems, uh, how is their audience, and the audience varies a lot between these countries, and uh, that's something we need to do. And most, most games which are specialized for the Western market, they call it the Western market. Mm -hmm. um, and is that Europe and the US? U Europe and US, okay. like the, the classic games market, let's sure. like that. Um, some of these games don't fit in the region. Uh, either they are not fitting the audience um, or they're not fitting the culture. Um, so we have to adapt. Um, but there are games that work worldwide, including the, the media region. And uh, that's something, you know, everybody has to learn. And, and, uh, so how important is it to build a community of gamers around each release? Well, I mean, the, for, for all the games, you have to build a community around it. Uh, communities like this password everybody's using, uh, I call them fans. And when fans are becoming engaged, uh, they have a need to communicate. And uh, the more professional you communicate with them, the more, let's say, friend to friend you are, uh, the more engaged you are. And that helps the game, especially the, what we call lifetime of the game. Um, so, uh, most companies have community managers, moderators, that people specially educated how to talk to these people and um, how, to, how to engage them and how to support them. And uh, the fans are very thankful for that. So, yes, it is very important. Even before you release it, you can do Okay, and then in terms of marketing, would you say that marketing a game is more important than the quality in terms of success? No. Um, th there are exceptions. There are games which are not really that good, but due to marketing or due to brand or due to, let's say, the topic, they have been successful. But that's the exception. Um, the solid foundation you need is a good game. And marketing just can accelerate or optimize the spread of the game. Uh, but if the game uh, is not good enough, the, the fans will know. And, you know they, they talk to each other, they don't recommend the game, and of course you don't have them on but there have been, sadly, enough examples where the game isn't good, but it has been a success. Just due to, you know, I don't want to name names, but if you have a really famous IP, worldwide known, and you put it into a bad game, even that kind of works. And that's, but that's not how we should work. So, good game first, all the rest follow. In setting benchmarks against which to measure how your games are doing in the region, do you look to the West or to other developing markets? We don't look to the West. Um, the MENA region has its very specific target audience. It's very male-dominant, um, it's very young, um, and if you tailor games to this audience, uh, you will have success. Now, this audience also, also exists in the West, um, so if you make a game which actually addresses both audiences, you, you will have success. So let's say a bb oriented game, uh, very male-dominant, like let's say League of Legends, Lord of Tanks, and all these games, they have success in the near region, and, um, and that's where you have to go. But I think this is just a temporal thing, um, because once these, these young male audience grows up, they continue to play, but they will move off from the, let's say, fast reflexes. And you know, reflexes go down when you grow, grow up, meaning that they go more and more to other games, which are very successful in the West as well. So I think you know, in the next five years, we will see other genres uh, being successful in the region. In your experience, are there any differences between the Arab game consumer and the Western game consumer? Um, so what are they? And then are people in the region more prone to spending money inside a game? Uh, more money, that depends. I mean, just within Europe, we have like 10 different patterns of how people spend. And some of these patterns are very compatible with the MENA region. Let's say the, the everything very east, like Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia, the spending patterns are very similar to, to the MENA region. So we have that in front of our door, how that works. Um, usually it's low conversion, but, uh, but high spending. 
but high spending relative to the normal income of people there. So high spending might not be high spending, let's say, for France or Germany, but it will be high spending for Poland or for you know countries like Jordan or anyone else. Um, so it's relative, um, and it varies country by country. Um, but in terms of players, um, the MENA players are very strong. They're very skillful, um, meaning that if your game is too easy, they won't like it. Um, they are very, very competitive, and they are very loud about it, um, in a positive sense. Now, are you, are you speaking in comparison to gamers in the West? Yes. Okay, so they're more competitive than gamers in the They are more competitive, and they are really good at what they do. Um, so if you have, you know, I bet, I bet in the future we will have much more MENA countries winning, you know, competitive game world championships uh, than before, simply because they, they have really skillful players. Um, but they're not there yet, but they will be soon. And of course, you, you have to adhere their... They grow up differently in a different way, you know, religion, culture, surrounding, everything. So you have to adapt the game to that a little bit. And it, you know, like how the hero looks like, uh, the graphics, uh, some, some of the stuff we have to fix because you cannot release it that way in that country. Um, and that's, that's a pretty much a big effort for most publishers. And publishers who don't have success there yet don't like to do that. But the publishers who have success, you know, they love doing it because, you know, they embrace the market. So it's a kind of head by its tail situation. So if the first success is there, they tailor the game for, to the market. If the success is not there, they kind of just try to find it easy way and um, uh, that's a pity for some of the big publishers but uh, I think that the publishers who are really successful here will teach them this. Um, it's a big market, it's like 500 million people, half a billion, that's huge. But generally if you localize the game it actually works in all the countries. So theoretically it makes it easy to you know, target all of them but the, the cultural differences and the, the borders and the, let's say politics and everything makes it a little bit more difficult in some countries. Um, but once you're in, um, I mean, I heard stories from company. It's a German company who uh, had, had a really huge success in Iran, which is unusual to have a game success there. Um, and the government shot the game down. Um, and the simple reason was that on the servers where everybody was playing, these people could communicate with people outside the country. And they didn't like that, so they shut the game down. So the company had to negotiate with the, with the parliament and actually reopened the servers just for Iranian people. And you know, they're huge, they have like over a million players. And uh, you know, these success stories, if these spread, um, I think, you know, many more companies will follow. So last question about conversion rates. Um, what kind of conversion rates are we seeing in the region for games? Um, and then what have been some successful strategies uh, employed by regional developers in driving these numbers up? You know that to get conversion rates, like this is the biggest kept secret of all the companies. Mm -hmm. And you're about to crack it. Yeah, I'm not going to crack it, but you know, I can tell you ranges where, uh, where usually conversion rates are. Uh, but in order to raise conversion, uh, that's actually the secret of the trade. That's actually what I'm consulting companies how to actually do that. Okay. Um, so uh, generally on, on, on smartphones and on iPads, you have conversion rates anywhere between like 1 and 5%. But the problem the with that... For the region. But the problem with that number is that it's an average. And the average uh, removes the peaks. There are some games that have more than 10%. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you know what games these are, you can actually learn how they do it in order to, to have that big conversion rate. Because if you have 10%, you know, you, you can have a really comfortable developer. Mm -hmm. With 1 to 3%, it's hard. It's really tough. So the more casual the game is, the less conversion there is. The more poor the game is, the higher the conversion is. Mm -hmm. So the higher the conversion, the less your audience size has to be. So you can live with a much smaller audience if you know how to convert them. Um, and some secrets, of course, is that you know you have to naturally integrate your monetization system to the game. So it's actually a part of the game and not like something on top. So if you enter any game and it immediately communicates, I, you know, pay me, uh, that's, that's not a good thing. So the more natural it is in the game and the player enjoys the game and sees, hey, I can actually pay to get some advantages, he will do that. But if the game flashes too much, you know, pay me 20% offer, this, this, is like every five minutes, that's not going to work. Because the, the, the player gets the feeling that pain is more important than actually the game. And that should not be. And there are enough examples out there who never do that um, and who have really super high conversion rates. The highest conversion rate I have seen outside this region, though, is 50%. Okay. Yeah, that's in Japan. But they are crazy. But you know, uh, if they are crazy about games, we can get crazy about games as well. So, Why not? You know, we can go there.